The Apocalyptic but Occult Book of Enoch and the Fallen Angels. And we have comments here by theologians, Christian Orthodox fathers. Enoch is considered to be the seventh after Adam, the patriarch Adam of the Jews, to live in the years before the deluge, the great flood. Methuselah's father, Lamech, grandfather, and Noah's grandfather, is considered by Christian tradition to be one of the two prophets, the other being Elijah, who did not die but ascended alive to heaven. It's believed that both will return to earth in the years of the Antichrist, as mentioned in Revelation of John in the New Testament, the last book of the Holy Bible, and will be the last witnesses of the faith before the second coming of Christ, according to uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Now, however, many question the historicity of Enoch's face, not acknowledging that it is the collective title of a class of spiritually advanced people who have taught science and the arts to others, as accepted by Elena Blavatsky's Theosophical System. The same circle believes that the names of Prometheus, Orpheus, the god Thoth or Trimagistus, the Atlantean, the Edris of the Muslims, and other persons mentioned in mythology are also collective. The prophet Enoch is credited with writing a text which contains prophecies about the coming of the Messiah, about the end of the world, speaks of the fall of angels, and gives detailed descriptions of hell and paradise, the movements of the planets and the weather, and much more. This book, the teachings of which are believed to have been transmitted through oral tradition, is not included in the books of the Old Testament, and is considered an occult text, an apocrypha, although it may have greatly influenced not only the Pentateuch of the Jews, but even the book of Revelation of the Apostle John and the letters of the Apostles as well. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. The Church Fathers The first fathers of the Church were strongly influenced by it and praised it, such as Saint Irenaeus, Saint Justin, Saint Clement of Alexandria, Saint Athenagoras, the Apostle Peter, and the Jewish historian Josephus. Nevertheless, none of them agreed with the narration of the fall of the angels, as we shall see below. The fact is, however, that it's not considered a heretical book, even if it is not included in the Old Testament. So it is not considered a heretical book. Now, scholars have suggested that it may have been written in Hebrew during the Babylonian exile, because many of its descriptions, such as those of the Old Testament, resemble those of the prophet Daniel. It's certain that it underwent variations in its copies, and while it was well known in early Christian times, its traces disappear around the 8th to the beginning of the 9th century AD. The English travelers Bruce and Ruppel find a copy in Abyssinia written in the Coptic language, and in 1811, it's translated into English by Bishop Lawrence and then into other languages. So as mentioned above, the point that provoked reactions was the narration of the fall of the angels, the fallen angels. The Christian tradition holds that an angel, Aphrodite, for, for example, probably the highest in the angelic hierarchy because of the arrogance that made him want to be uh, above God. Actually, I, I, this is a translation, it's not Aphrodite, it should be Lucifer. Uh, rebelled and the angels were divided into two factions. Those who followed him, followed God, followed the fallen angel, and to those who responded to the call of Archangel Michael, quote, let us stand well, let us stand in fear and awe of God, end quote. The first, together with their leader, the you know, Lucifer, fell for over uh, 
for, uh, from the uh, hierarchy of light and turned into the dark demons who have been plotting the divine work ever since against divine work of God. Many traditions have been created on this view by the Roman Catholic and the Orthodox churches. The Book of Enoch has different views of the divine work. And it was done when the sons of men were multiplied in those days. They were born beautiful and good daughters, and they saw the angels, the sons of heaven, and spake unto one another, Let us choose ourselves as women from men, and give birth to children ourselves. The And uh, Shemiazaz said unto them, I assume that's Lucifer, they are their leaders. I'm afraid you will not want to do this thing, and I am the only debtor of a great sin. Everyone responded, Let us all swear and curse each other not to avert this land until we do it and sing this thing. Then they all shrugged their shoulders and cursed each other in it. And they took wives of themselves and chose every woman out of themselves and went in unto them and joined themselves to them and taught them pharmacy and children rhizomes and sowed them showed them herbs and in the gastric lavusin gi giant giants of trillions of thousands of oxen fell and made the toils of the people as these people were not able to subsid subsidize the giants dared to attack the people and begin to sin against the beasts and reptiles and the fish and other flesh and blood and the earth rejoiced against the wicked the evil that the giants sowed on earth. The narrative goes on to describe in detail the arts that the angels taught the women and the evil that the giants sowed on the earth until the four most powerful angels, Michael, Gabriel, Suriel, and Uriel, looked at the earth and realized what had happened, so they informed God. God decided to throw the fallen into the depths of the abyss forever, the giants to be destroyed by their own hands and the sinful race of men to disappear from by the flood. The fallen begged Enoch to intercede for them to God, but he answered them that angels intercede for men and not the other way around. That is, Enoch was a man interceding for fallen angels. Continuing, the text mentions the extremely interesting that the giants will give birth to evil spirits that will be called spirits of evil, they will not eat, they will not drink, they will be invisible and responsible for every human misfortune. There have been various attempts to interpret the above narrative, which is the, quote, most heretical, end quote, point of the book. First of all, it should be pointed out that such a text can be allegorical and its real interpretation can be based on keys without the knowledge of which is not possible to interpret. I will rely on what is literally described. Sons of God reproducing with inferior women, quote unquote. Some argue that the translation of the word, word Elohim is incorrect because it translates not only as angels, as in Enoch, but also as sons of God or virtuous people. Therefore, sons of God, virtuous people, were reproduced with inferior women and for this they sinned and not the angels of God. The truth is that the Hebrew word Elohim is a plural, which means gods or powers, and the phrase Bene Elohim, which means sons of the gods, is mentioned in Genesis in the phrase in question, quote, his sons saw, end quote, good, the God, the daughters of men, Genesis 6.2. The explanation of this point in the translation I have at my disposal brother, savior, under En Vasiliadis, claims that the sons of God are the descendants of the pious generation of Seth by Enos, and the daughters of men are the descendants of the generations of Cain, Cain who killed Adam, uh, yes, um, uh, Abel, which is characterized as corrupt. One of the Tassili's most famous works show what appeared to be some kind of vehicle with a rope pulling a group of women, women who appeared to be abducted, the sons of God took the daughters of men to uh, Genesis 6-2. There were 200 of them who came down in the days of Jared. 200 angels who came down to earth in the days of Jared. The text of Enoch, however, states that, quote, there were 200 who descended to the top of Mount Hermon in the days of Jared, end quote. 
So if they were humans, from what obviously higher point did they descend to the mountain? To get down somewhere, one has to be higher, and what is higher than a mountain? This together with the interpretation based on the sons of God as descendants of Seth brings to mind the occult false book of Adam and Eve, uh, which states that the protoplasts, the first created Adam and Eve, expelled from paradise, lived on top of a very high mountain after at the time of Abel's assassination. Cain's descendants lived at the foot of the mountain, and the pious at the top were forbidden to descend and associate with their meager relatives at the foot of the mountain, so that they wouldn't uh, corrupt themselves, obviously. Uh, sorry, I missed my line. Um, that this, together with the interpretation base of God as descendants of Seth, brings to mind the occult false book of Adam and Eve, the protoplasts, um, Cain's descendants living at the foot of the mountain and the pious at the top were forbidden to descend and associate with their meager relatives at the foot of the mountain. But even if we accept this as an explanation, the text mentions the descendants of Arandis, quote-unquote, descendants of Arandis, so we do not accept that the pious of the top descended to the uh, corrupt, corrupt below, but some higher than the mountain. The interpretation of the word as people, however, does not explain the, product, the products of this union, hence the giants or Nephilim, as mentioned in the text. If they were humans, why did they reprodu the reproduction lead to the birth of giants then? It would have been more, uh, just more humans. So who are uh, also referred to Genesis? Giants, Genesis giants. And the giants were on earth in those days, and with that, as if the sons of God were coming into the daughters of men, and they became one, they were the giants of the century, the famous people, Genesis 6-4. While in Numbers 33-13, he mentions that they were the sons of Anak, and it is suggested that in the end of the flood, uh, they did not destroy all of the giants, uh, but at least some survived in the region of Palestine. Born under spirits and flesh, another argument of those who accept the version of the mistranslation is based on Genesis, where God states, My spirit shall not remain in these men forever, for they are flesh, Genesis 6.3. If we look at the text, however, we find that the word people can refer to the giants and not to their parents, the fallen or the vigilantes. The meaning does not change if we consider this and agree with the Book of Enoch, that born of spirits and flesh, quote-unquote, on earth their habitation is. Therefore, I believe that even this argument expresses, expressed by St. Augustine does not exclude the correctness of the text of Enoch. The most central argument of the book's critics, however, is that according to them, angels cannot have children as spirits, we will say, stay here longer. In the Gospel of Matthew, Christ says that, quote, in the resurrection, ni they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are angels of God in heaven, end quote. Based on this, the book's critics claim that Christ himself has given a definitive answer to these series. Again, however, the God-man could mean, the God-man meaning, of course, Jesus Christ, could mean not the angels as a whole, but those who chose not to unite, the righteous angels who answered the call of the Archangel Michael and remained in paradise. It does not make clear in any case whether angels have the ability to create life or not. Angels are supposed to be asexual spirits, at least in the Christian Orthodox tradition, who are necessarily depicted as young men in iconography, like the demons. However, the latter have been accused of indecency against living men and women in the form of incubi succubi. I do not know if a case of childbearing has reported, but there are many cases of sexual intercourse. The Inquisition accused witches of indecent acts with demons. Church saints, saints say they had suffered from them. Childbearing by gods, goddesses, is a common tradition throughout the world. In the Immaculate Conception of Christ and Others was mentioned by a spirit and it is supposed that the Antichrist of the Christian tradition will be the product of such an unlawful conception. 
of the demonic spirit having, uh, of course, uh, relations with a, a human woman. Something that usually escapes the attention of all those who have dealt with the issue we are negotiating, we're discussing, is the attitude of the daughters of men. Why did they accept, without fear at least, contact with these spiritual entities that were obviously completely different from them? Throughout nature, the female should feel an attraction to the male, which may be nice or ugly, yet it looks like individuals of its kind, if one excludes at least perversions. So could the uh, egregores have deceived women by appearing in human form? Well, we know that St. Paul the Apostle explains that to us. He says, uh, know, know the vile, the, the, the um, methods and the um, techniques of the evil one, because he appeared to Eve as an angel of light. And he, she was enticed by him. Right? So, uh, she was attracted to him that way. So, of course they could. They could appear in human form. The entire Old Testament and the Book of Enoch states that angels can take human form when they want to. So logically, they should appear before them as humans. If they declare their intended identities, we do not know. However, they may have done so or not. Otherwise, God would have no reason to be angry with the women since they fell victim to fraud. But the God of the Old Testament has so many human flaws that no one can be sure of how he would react. Well, maybe, of course, God is always constant and uh, pure in what he does and correct, but perhaps not everything is written in the Holy Bible. We don't know all the explanations of what went on in these events. Now, Eve's deception by the serpent, the evil one, the, uh, the uh, Satan, Christian belief seems to place the fall of the angels in pre-human times before the creation of Adam's, Adam, Genesis states that Eve was deceived by uh, in paradise, so the fall must have happened earlier. But Enoch tells us that it was in the years of Jared that the uh, these um, angels descended on Mount Hermon, the, the angels that the two hundred angels that were fell from grace. That is in times when people were already living on earth, expelled from paradise for many generations, at least six in number. And if they, uh, they really, uh, the apple really symbolizes the knowledge that a spirit should never reveal to humans, then one could assume that the author of Genesis had in mind the story of Enoch, although he or others took care to censor and cover it behind symbolism. Okay, so obviously a lot of this in uh, the book of Genesis was not revealed or recorded and hidden behind symbolism. Lamech. Noah's grandson got married, and when his wife had a child, terror seized his soul. The child's flesh was white as snow and pink like a rose, while his hair was also white. As soon as he opened his eyes, the room was lit, and as soon as he opened his mouth, he began to praise God, the, the child of an angel. Lamech feared that he was not his own child, but that of an angel, sent his father Methuselah to Enoch, who was already living with the angels to consult him. Enoch assured him that he was his own child, that is the child of the fleshling child of Lamech, um, narrated to him the fall of the fasting angels and prophesied to him that Noah would survive the flood that would destroy the people and the products of the ungodly with the fallen. In the first phase, the image of Noah looks like albinism a disease in which no melanin is produced in the body. No albino, however, can speak from the moment of his birth. In Lamech's question, it seems that the belief in the reproductive abilities of the angels was common at that time and could not have been influenced by Enoch since the latter only then revealed to Methuselah the fall and the awakening and the coming flood. Creation of the white race could Noah's description be a symbolic reference to the creation of another race? Unfortunately, there is no confirmed evidence of such great antiquity of the Jews, nor are there any reports of the appearance of Noah's sons. Here, uh, as in the story of the flood, the possibility of the influence of the copyists or the authors from their earlier sources seems perhaps more intense than ever. Enoch was already living with the angels in a place far away, 
but accessible from Methuselah. What this place may have been, no one knows. However, after that, Enoch ascended to heaven. Do the views of all those who claim that they were not angels but intelligent beings from other planets who met mortals descending from their flying vehicles and due to the difference in genetic material gave birth to giants stand logically? I leave that to your judgment. It, the Church introduces a new doctrine. The Book of Enoch was presented very briefly and with more weight on the fall of the angels and less on the birth of Noah. Of course, the text does not only include these facts but also descriptions of other spheres of existence, interpretations of celestial phenomena, the names of the quote-unquote lords of the celestial bodies or angels of power as they were typically mentioned. These passages contain many difficult points are a good ground for study. The exclusion of the Book of the Old Testament series is understandable since what is described contradicts the traditions embraced by the Church in its attempt to introduce a new doctrine, free from old conceptions of similar doctrines. Whether the Church has achieved this is a matter for this article. God tough and punishing? The God of Enoch is a typical God of the entire Old Testament, tough, punitive, unconvinced, majestic in the face of his omnipotence, unyielding in the face of the apology of the fallen, with suspicions of human emotions and especially anger. Demons who afflict people are not the enigmatic in Enoch. These are rather described in sad figures, in contrast to the Christian tradition which blames them for every evil. In Enoch, the spirits of the giants are the ones who cause suffering, trapped in the lower material dimensions from which they were born. And knowledge is considered sinful. The concept of knowledge acquisition is also ambiguous. On the one hand, it's considered a sin which is transmitted by the fallen angels, and on the other hand, Enoch offers plenty of it. In other words, while giving some astronomical and astronomical knowledge, he rebukes um, Tamil, Aquila, Asarabel, who taught the same things of the daughters of men, the similarities in the history of the Titans, and especially with Prometheus, are obvious. And one wonders if all this technological civilization we have developed, which can destroy as well as save, started with a uh, corruption or if it is a divine gift. What God, who we accept to be the perfect being, would have flaws so vindictive, so human, that would deprive his beloved creatures, humans, of knowledge to make their lives better? That is why the Book of Enoch, regardless of the correctness or not of its narrative, like all of the Old Testament, lends itself to fruitful reflections on religious, theological, and not only issues. And I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. This is really intriguing, the Book of Enoch and what, he, what is written in there. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.